Six new cars, a new track, the start of what we hope will be a gigantic Assetto Corsa here begins today with the Steam release of the GT2 Pack DLC. We were able to test the new content in advance and we'll let you know if it's worth the 17 euro 99 price tag and if it enhances the overall ACC experience. Welcome back to Overtake, I'm Michel and you guys have been waiting for a new track. The hype was huge when Kunos announced it, here it is, The Ring. Okay, this is not the ring people are waiting for. Just be patient, the Nautch life is also coming, hopefully soon. In this new pack, it is indeed the Red Bull ring. It makes sense alongside the GT2s as it has been used in the 2023 season of the GT2 European Series. This track, located in the Styria region of Austria, was built in 1969 and has gone through multiple iterations over the decades. From the Österreich ring, through the R1 ring, to the current modern Grand Prix configuration, that is also part of the F1 calendar. In my opinion, Kunos has captured the surroundings, track details and panorama of the Alpine roller coaster very well. Like all the other tracks in ACC, except Sandford, the Red Bull Ring is laser scanned. You can also hear some commentary from George Morgan in the pits and on the grandstands that adds to the atmosphere. The fast corners and easy to learn aspect of the track fit well with ACC's GT racing focus. None of the curbs, which are often used to take advantage of the full track width, have a scary feel. You immediately get a good feel for the layout and the surface. I can see this being a popular track for online racing. Will this also apply to the GT2 cars? GT3 has dominated both real world and sim racing for many years in terms of the broad competitive player base. The cars in the SRO GT2 class run mainly in the support category of the GT World Challenge Europe and are mainly aimed at gentlemen and paid drivers to close the gap between GT4 and GT3. In short, they have less downforce but more power than the GT3s. Sounds challenging and fun to drive, so let's see what they are all about. Along with the Red Bull Ring, we now get some spectacular cars. Audi R8 LMS GT2, KTM Crossbow GT2, Maserati GT2, Mercedes AMG GT2 and, based on the 991 generation Porsche GT2 RS, its CS Evo racing variant and even the new edition of the Porsche 935, limited to 77 units in real life. I was especially excited about the KTM, because the carbon monster marketed by KTM as the ultimate track weapon puts the 5-cylinder turbo from Audi with up to 600 horsepower behind the driver. Thanks to consistent weight reduction, the crossbow weighs just over 1000 kilograms. And you can feel it. The crossbow has the shortest braking distance of the GT2 DLC and is very agile. The jet fighter-like canopy really has a unique look. As all the driving information has been moved to the steering wheel, Due to a lack of space, finding the right camera position can be a bit of a challenge. I actually used the ACC function here for the first time, where you simply show the car's display separately on the screen. The next one is also a mid-engine beauty and the favorite of our team member Yannick. The Maserati GT2 debuted at Porica in October 2023, powered by a 3-liter V6 Netuno engine from the Maserati MC20. Power output, depending on balance of performance, a little over 600 HP. There are not many liveries available yet, but the level of detail of the car's body, lights and aero is well done. The same for all other cars, by the way. While it is very balanced and great to drive, similar to the KTM, I get the feeling that it will be a bit hard to keep up with the higher powered cars of this pack on faster track with long straights, talking about the standard setups. But just enjoy its engine load for a second. If you also enjoy this type of content, please like, hit the bell, subscribe and visit our websites to read about the latest news of our beloved genre. My personal favorite of the pack is the AMG GT2. The 4-liter V8 powerhouse from Afalterbach is very easy to understand in terms of driving behavior thanks to its front mid-engine layout. It is made for customer racing and you can feel that in the sim as well. It feels quite heavy to maneuver at first, but still very precise. That's how a German GT muscle car with racing technology should be. 
The 700 HP feel kinda safe. Compared to the GT3 variants, however, all GT2s are noticeably spongier and not as crisp as the GT3s. Turn in and force feedback are also not immediately satisfactory with the base setup. It takes a few laps to get used to the feel, but then it gets better. Especially in multiplayer races, it is very rewarding to work your way up to an opponent, as the tolerance for mistakes is also somewhat lower. Yannick and I were racing the cars in a special event on stream with others yesterday and it was great fun. We both felt that the force feedback was different from the GT3 or GT4 cars. More detailed, not quite as flat, but also a bit softer when turning as if you were driving on all-season tires. The next car on the list is the Audi R8 LMS GT2. A close relative of the Lamborghini Huracan Super Trofeo and also with a customer racing focus. With its veteran V10, it is the only naturally aspirated GT2 in the field and definitely the first choice for all displacement fans. In terms of characteristics, it is closest to the Maserati and still has one of the most distinctive sounds. The true GT2 fans just noticed when I mentioned the naturally aspirated engine, because one is missing. The Brabham BT63 GT2 didn't make it. Shortly before the release of the pack, David Brabham, the youngest son of the legendary Jack Brabham, announced the end of Brabham automotive brand after six years. This meant that there was probably no longer a license available for the car. That's very sad. Last but not least, we have the Porsche Pair, based on the crazy turbocharged 700 horsepower GT2 RS road car. The 911 GT2 RS Club Sport and the highly limited 935 feel very different from what we have come to expect from Porsche's naturally aspirated race cars in the recent years. Remember when I talked about the soft and numb feeling when turning in? This is most present in these two cars, which unfortunately makes them less enjoyable for me than the other cars in the pack. Hopefully some setup tweaks will help there. The 935 5 is stunning in appearance alone. Most real-world exhibits will gather dust in collections, so at least give it some virtual track time. Finally, please note that the Huracan Super Trofeo and the 488 Challenge are also listed for the GT2 Group in ACC, as these cars are also eligible for competition. In addition to the new cars, the latest update also includes updates to the GT3 liveries for the GT World Challenge 2023 and the option to drive the official 2023 season in both GT3 and GT2 in single player. However, Dijon and Algarve tracks are missing for the latter. Time for our verdict. Some can only hope that this class will bring more variety to online racing and that many people will drive GT2s for example on LFM. You could argue about bundling the cars with tracks as people who only want the Red Bull ring for their GT3 races will have to buy the GT2s and thus spend more money for content they might never use. So maybe it would be fairer to split the cars and uh, the tracks and sell them separately. Personally, I think the price is very fair and appropriate for what is offered here and the high quality increases the desire for the Nordschleife. Let us know in the comments if you plan to buy or wait. Until then, enjoy our content, like this video from this year's Sim Formula Europe with lots of new sim racing products. See you next time.